Hi everyone, this is Kelly Doyle with the ASCE Made Me blog. Welcome to ASCE with Bad Drawings. Today I'm going to talk about how to build a concrete canoe. The first step is to design buoyant concrete, which means that the concrete must be less than 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. Concrete is made from three main ingredients, water, cement, and aggregates. Generally, the aggregates are sand or gravel that are pretty heavy, so we take those out and we add small, lightweight glass spheres. For your concrete mix design, you'll want to use the absolute volume mix design method. That means we're going to design a specific volume of concrete based on the density of the material. For example, a 10 pound bowling ball does not have the same volume as 10 pounds of feathers. A bowling ball takes up much less volume because it is more dense. The same thing happens when we use lightweight aggregates or any lightweight components in our mix design. They take up a much larger volume for the same overall weight. It's easier to measure the weight of materials instead of the volume of these materials accurately. So we use the specific gravity, which is the weight per unit volume, to determine how much weight should be added of each component to make the correct volume. The portions of each component are determined by trial and error. If you have the time, make about a thousand batches to figure out exactly what you need. However, most of us don't have that much time, so just make as many as you can. The next step is to design the hull. The canoe hull consists of a bow, stern, rocker, keel, and gunnel. The main thing you have to think about when designing a canoe is the shape. Obviously you don't want to design a canoe like a box because that's not going to go through the water very well. The geometry of the canoe is going to make a big difference in how it performs in the water. The next thing to consider is the length. A shorter canoe is actually going to go less fast at its top speed. Also, you obviously have to make the canoe long enough to fit all of the people in it. When the canoe is loaded with four people, you have to ensure that the water line is not going to be too high. If that's the case, then you're going to sink your canoe and everybody's going to fall out. This is especially important to consider when going around the buoys in the co-ed sprint race. It's very easy to sink your canoe in that type of case. Once you determine the overall geometry of the canoe, you have to build the mold. There's two types of molds you can build. With a female mold, you generally cut the shape of the canoe into a block and then you fill that shape in with the concrete. So the concrete shape against the mold is going to be the outside of the canoe. With a male mold, you do the opposite. You build what the inner dimensions of the canoe would be, generally upside down on a table, and then the concrete is placed on the outside of that mold. The contact surface between the concrete and the mold then becomes the inside of the canoe. Molds are most commonly made out of wood or styrofoam. However, the downside of styrofoam is if you get a low density, normal styrofoam, it will generally deform when you start placing concrete onto it. To prevent this, you have to make the styrofoam stronger by adding some sort of external surface to it. When building the mold, it's important to remember that it needs to be easy to disassemble. One trick is to make a key in the mold. You do this by making a triangular shape in the mold so that when you flip it right side up, you can pull that key out, then pull the other portions of the mold in from the bow and the stern and lift those out. The fourth step is actually building the canoe. When you build the canoe, you can apply the reinforcement either before you construct it or during the construction process. The Nevada Concrete Canoe Team likes to place their reinforcement before casting concrete. They use a pre-stressing tendon system where they apply grade screws first as depth gauges. Then they tie pre-stressing cables to those grade screws. Finally, carbon fiber mesh reinforcement is tied to the pre-stressing tendons and the grade screws. The cross-sectional view shows you a little bit better how these things are layered. First the grade screws are applied, then the pre-stressing tendons, then the carbon fiber mesh. 
Finally, concrete is pushed through all of the layers of reinforcement in order to make a single monolithic layer. However, the construction technique doesn't need to be this complex. A lot of schools just place concrete first directly on their mold, followed by layers of the reinforcing fabric or fibers, and then a final layer of concrete. If you're concerned that your canoe will not float, then the best thing to do during this process is to add styrofoam in the bulkheads, which is located at the bow and the stern of the canoe. As long as they're encased in concrete, it's completely legal in the concrete canoe rules. Step five is curing the canoe properly. The concrete needs adequate hydration in order to cure properly. The first seven days are the most critical because this is when the concrete gains the most strength. The concrete overall should be cured for about 14 to 28 days to gain all of its strength before you remove the mold. If you're not careful with the curing process, the concrete can shrink and crack quite a bit as it tries to hydrate. This can lead to complete failure of your concrete in your canoe. The final step of the process is removing the mold, which of course needs to be done carefully. And that's how you build a concrete canoe. Thanks for watching and be sure to follow my blog for more episodes of ASCE with Bad Drawings.